The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this session of our distance learning. I am Esbe Clifford, your manufacturing mechanics teacher. Today, we are going to be handling workshop technology for Form 4 of the manufacturing mechanics option. But before we start, we need an overview of our module. We are going to begin with general presentation of the module. Under the general introduction, or general presentation, we are going to talk about the different items we are going to have all throughout the year. We move on to our learning outcome. What is expected of each of you, the learners, after going through this subject or the module. The third point will be the previous knowledge which you must have gone through making you fit for the lesson or the module entirely. On the general presentation of this module, you should make sure that we put in mind that there are three different learning sequences. The first amongst which we have manufacturing by machine operations. Here we are talking about using the different machines found in our workshops in order to realize different parts or work pieces. Second point is assembling of these pieces. There are different ways of assembling these pieces. We may use fusion welding. We may equally use uh, screws and nuts. We can, we can use riveting. There are so many of them. The third sequence here we'll be talking about the basic concepts on numerically controlled machining, which is not too different from the first point, which is which we are talking about manufacturing by machine. But then the additional feature there is a computer that helps us in carrying out the programming, not using our hands as we're doing with the machining operations. Under manufacturing by machining operations, we have three subtopics. The first one is complex turning operations on the machine, which is the lead machine. The second point is complex milling operations. We are talking about those operations that are a bit complex from the simple ones on the milling machine. And the third one we are going to be handling is the abrasion operations. On that point B, which is talking about the assembling of pieces, we are going to focus on the electric arc welding. This is welding done by fusion. Point C, under the basic concepts of numerically controlled machining, we are going to be focused on numerically controlled machine, the use of machines which are controlled with the computers. Everything is going to be input there and you just observe how the operating sequence goes on. The learning outcomes from each of you learner is we should be able at the end of this module manufacture mechanical work pieces by fitting machining and welding. When we talk of fitting here, using hand tools like the chisel, the files and of course the hacksaw. Machining here is talking about working on the different working station, meaning the lead machine, the milling machine, the drilling machine and so on. And on that welding, we are going to be talking about electric arc welding. 
at learning outcome point two, we are going to apply fundamentals of numerical control machining. Under previous knowledge, fitting will be the first which you are supposed to know. Fitting, fitting here talks about bench work, the operations that we use our hands and the bench alongside with our different table vices. The second of previous knowledge that you are supposed to know are the simple turning operations which you must have done in the previous class. We talk equally of the simple milling operations which are handled on the milling machines. We must have done that in the previous year. And of course, shaping operations equally on the shaping machine, then you have to have a basic knowledge on maintenance of machine tools. Reasons being that when your machine happens to have an incident, you should be able to be the first mechanic to take care of the machine before, even if the problem is higher before then, you can get somebody more specialized in that. Now, under this module, we have topic number one, complex turning operations. What are they all about? Then we are going to move directly to the presentation of this module. You have the module there with six different lessons, as we can see them listed here. The first, which is the main topic we are talking about, is manufacturing by machining operations. The subtopic here is complex turning operations which we are handling. And the lesson of today, which begin, we are going to begin with, is the definition of concept is going to be handled in a single presentation, followed by turning of types of turning operations it will be handled in two presentations. We talk about the cutting tools in one operation, the cutting condition in one presentation, the turning procedures in two presentations, and of course, the last but not the least, mounting of workpiece in one operation. Today, our lesson of today, number one, is definition of these concepts. What are these concepts we are talking here? We have to follow this learning plan of today, beginning with the learning outcomes, what is expected of each of you, the learners, followed by the previous knowledge, what you must have encountered before fitting it into this lesson of today. And the third is the professional situation. We are going to lay hands on the activities that we encounter. We are going to face the, 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 the physical activity, meaning the professional situation. Next, we will follow is the learning activity, what we are going to be doing along the teaching and learning process. Then we are going to give a summary of what we are going to do today. An application exercise will follow up next and possibly a take-home assignment which will keep you busy at home before our next session. Under learning outcomes of the topic, you should be able to describe complex turning operations. You should be able to carry out calculations for complex turning operations. And of course, you should be able to set up and perform complex turning operations. Now, for the previous knowledge, like we said, a general knowledge on simple turning operations should be what you must have inquired before continuing with these complex turning operations. This is our professional situation. And here we are supposed to observe the image on figure one. Figure one here shows we have a workpiece. This workpiece has helicodia ridges. How were they created? With the help of our turning tool, our trading tool here. Mind you that the workpiece here has an arrow that shows the rotation of work and the tool shows the transition of the feet. With this workpiece and the tool, we then have the form generating surface and the surface we call it threading. Now the learning activities here, the first question we are posed with is to give the name of the machine tool used to manufacture the workpiece. Then the second question is to list the cutting tools and the measuring instruments needed to realize the operations. Definition of concepts here, we have the fact that complex turning is a machining process in which a cutting tool, typically a non-rotatory cutting tool, describes a helix tool part by moving more or less linearly 
why the workpiece rotates. With the image we have in front of us here, figure two, there is picture number one and picture number two. On picture number one, you can see it's an external operation, while on picture number two is an internal operation. But when we talk on picture number one, you see the shape which we are developing here is a chamfer, which is an example of a taper turning shape. You see how conical the work looks like. And for the image number two here, there are two tools. The first here is creating an internal groove, while the second is producing an internal threading. Still under this point, we have to see different images. Under figure number two, we have an external threading operation being realized with the threading tool and a grooving tool which is executing an external groove on the surface of the workpiece. Then the image number four there shows the profile, how the tool is creating the profile which looks like an oval shape. And the tool there, you can see it for yourself, how the form looks like. Different from the other tools on the image number three. We have different complex turning operations which we are going to deal on today. The first amongst which is the taper turning. Here, a selection of workpiece is considered to be tapered when it increases or decreases the diameter in a uniform rate. When we look at it closely, the way this tool moves here, it increases or it decreases the diameter in a uniform rate, not producing helical edges, not producing hills and valleys. It moves in a very uniform rate as it goes. You see now you have a smaller diameter here while you have the bigger diameter here and the reverse could equally take place. This is an operation called taper turning. We equally have contour turning. Cutting tool has a simple shape but the fit motion is complex. Cutting tool is fed along a contour doors creating a contour shape on the workpiece. See, it's similar to the simple turning we have, but then as long as the tool is moving, you see they say the feet along a contour does creating a contour shape, meaning the feet motion here is complex. This image here looks like the handle of this ordinary stamp we use in offices. This is the form in which it is being realized with the help of the tool. Mind you that the workpiece is in motion while the tool comes with a speed well controlled by the machinist. We have cut off, some people call them part off. Here the tool is fed radically into rotating work at some location in order to cut off, to separate the piece into two different parts like we have in the image here, this is the tool. What the tool, how do we mount the tool? The tool is fed vertically towards the workpiece while the workpiece keeps on rotating on the axis of the spindle. This is to separate the two, they separate one piece now to become two pieces, different from what we used to use like the hacksaw on the bench. The next point here we have is threading. Pointed form tool is fed linearly across surface of rotating workpiece parallel to axis of rotation at a large feed rate, thus creating threads. These threads are helicodial ridges. Now, look at the image here. The tool has a form of the V, just the way we see the helicodial ridges. If we have a square head here, the ridges equally will be helicodial, but the form of a square will be the end point of our workpiece. Then after we have boring. Tool is used to enlarge an existing hole. Mind you that we cannot use a boring tool to create a hole. There must be an existing hole here produced by a drill or some other forming processes, for instance, molding or even forging. When the hole is created, the hole might not be perfect. Therefore, we need a boring tool as such to increase the diameter of the hole and equally to make the hole more precise. 
We have nulling, a tool produce a regular cross hatch pattern in the work surface. As you can see, any workpiece you will see with these hatch lines, they could be hatch lines just like they could be linear lines. And these lines here permit us to have a good gripping effect with the hands. These are the type of work pieces that need no additional tool to hold either for clamping or on time. So when you see a work piece with the knurling surface, the null surface, what should come in your mind is that this work piece is going to be handled with the hand. Examples of such, you can look the gas bottles, cylinders in your homes. They have the straight nozzles. You can see some amplifiers, some musical sets like radio sets, where you have to increase the volume and reduce, where you have to do the selection of the channel, tuning. You will see them having this profile on their bodies because we use the hands in order to regulate them. Now we are on form turning. Looking at the image of form turning, the workpiece here, you discover that the workpiece and the tool are similar. This is because the form tool here has been realized with respect to what is needed or respect to what is expected to appear on the workpiece. For instance, some people may say it is stamping, but then we should know that it's a form turning operation because the tool is taken towards the workpiece as the workpiece is rotating whatever material needs to be removed will be removed by the form tool just like we could do with any other tool for instance like the grooving tool when we use the grooving tool and we are sending it for the workpiece you see how it is creating and removing the excess material which we don't deem it necessary for the operation now we are going to be looking on the methods of holding our workpieces on the machine. First of them, we have to discuss is holding the workpiece between centers, meaning having the workpiece on the choke and having the tail stock to support it. The second point is holding simply on the choke. The chokes are of different types. You could talk of the three jaw choke, you could talk of the four jaw choke equally. We equally have a work holding called the collect. And of course, we have a face plate, which is a cylindrical flat plate, always mounted on the spindle if we don't use the choke or the collect. And then we talk about the steady rest. The steady rest there is to support slender pieces of longer dimensions in order for us to carry out our machining on the late machine. We are now going to detailly handle the first point here, which is holding the workpiece between centers. On the image here, we can see clearly, here we are using a face plate and a dock. There is a dock here that permits the rotation. If not, at the moment when it starts rotating, the face plate will be rotating without the workpiece. But with this dock attached to the, to the face plate, it's possible to rotate the workpiece with a screw mounted on the workpiece and the tail stock is here to support it from losing its axis. The second point is using a choke. We can vividly see the different jaws of the choke. Here is the first, the second, the third, and the foot is directly opposite this one here. This is what we call the four jaw independent choke because each of the jaws work discreetly from the other meaning you adjust your workpiece with respect to the center you want to use. And then we have here the collect choke. The collect choke here many a times is made with spring steel because it expands and it contracts. Here you have a sleeve to which it is mounted with respect to the different diameters of the choke because the collect choke comes in different sizes you have to identify the diameter you need to fit in the collect choke then the sleeve helps to fasten the workpiece in your collect choke by a forward squeeze that is the work bar there shown clearly and you have the collect choke permitting the squeezing of the workpiece 
The next point we are talking on is using the face plate. This is the face plate. The face, face plate has grooves on it. On these grooves, we can mount screws. It could be T bolt screws, which permits us to mount our workpiece directly. We can you see you this face plate to mount angle plates so much that we can put non-cylindrical work pieces on them before carrying out our operation. That's the face plate attached directly to the spindle in replacement of the choke. We have the clamps here. The clamps have been set through the slots found on the face plate and we have the work piece easily mounted. Then the turning operation can be executed without delay. We now have the steady rest. Here is the image of a steady rest. The steady rest some is similar to the choke, but then it has no jaws that it can actually clamp the workpiece rigid. It helps to support long workpieces, as you can see in the figure where I'm pointing. It has equally three jaws, one, two, three. You need to adjust them so that it falls at the center in order to hold your workpieces securely. So this steady rest is always mounted on the lathe machine on the bed, equally like the carriage of the lathe machine. A summary now to all what we have done for today is that we have to different we have the different complex turning operations. Amongst which we talked about is cut off, which we call sometimes part off separating one piece into two. We talk of the threading operation, which is another complex turning operation. We talk of the boring. We talk equally of the knurling. These are complex turning operation different from the simple ones which we can make mention of is the facing and the surfacing. We have equally discussed on contouring and we equally looked upon taper, which is the creation of a conical surface on our workpiece. Now, we equally looked upon the work holding devices, which permits us to hold these different work pieces on the lead machine. We started up with the choke. The choke could be the three jaw choke, it could equally be the four jaw choke. Mind you that we could have the four jaw independent choke and we can have the four jaw self centering choke. We talked of the collect choke, which we have seen in the previous slides. We have equally seen the face plate. With the face plate, we had slots on them that permitted us to pass our clamps in order to hold irregular pieces. We equally looked upon the steady. Here in the state with the steady, we have the three jaw steady, which is fixed, mounted on the bed of the machine, just like the carriage, in order to support long slender work pieces, not to displace in the process of machining. It also permits us to machine and to reduce the frequency of vibration. Now, we have our consolidation exercise, two of them in number. The first one is, give the name, the machine, give the name of the machine tool used in order to realize this workpiece. We have seen the workpiece there, we have seen the tool, we have seen the form of operation carried out on the workpiece. So I want each of you, the learner, to be able to identify on which machine tool this workpiece was realized. We have now the second question. List the cutting tools and the measuring instruments used to realize the workpiece which we just showed you in the previous slide. Here the response is we should know that the cutting tools used are, we have the knife cutting tool, 
we should know that we have the trading tool with the V shape. The measuring instruments here are we have our vernier caliper, which we had seen previously in our previous years back. We have a trade gauge that permits us to read and to identify if the trade actually realized corresponds with the isometric standard international wise. The take home assignment for today are two in number. The first is to name the different complex turning operations which you can easily identify. The second one is to describe briefly with the help of sketches the following operations. What is a nulling operation? What is a contouring operation? And then what is a cut-off operation? You should be able to give us short notes about these different complex operations. Now, leads us to our references. In order to have the notes which we have presented to you today, the following books were used, the following references. We worked on the conventional machining by Nikiti Elda. We worked on workshop technology by Hadjad Kordri. Equally, we worked on www.google.com. And for more work, you can contact any of these references so that it takes you deeper into the lesson. For more information, they are always available at your disposal. To bring us to the end of this lesson, we should put it in mind that our next lesson will be working on taper turning on the late machine. Taper turning here talks about the form of the profile of our workpiece, meaning you always see a larger diameter and a smaller diameter. Either we are progressing by reducing or we are progressing by increasing. So today we should sign out and we know when coming for the next session we should get ready to take off for the patterning. This is the end of our lesson of today. On a tege si, ma tege yop. On a tege minga, ma tege nyom. On a tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia ninya ne injobia yen. Ngani bana, ma tege mot. Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong. Esotina, biya jinkido. Mane tambia ninya.